Hallelujah. For you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kabarado shataya balada balada ba. Zitrele go shataya baluzu trele go tolo barado shataya ba. Hey, kabarado shutele grono shataya ba. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I wanna know your way. Hallelujah. I just want you to enjoy the song a little before the power supply goes away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love this music. I want to know your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is my cry every day. Oh, Lord. Set my life on fire for you. That's my prayer. I want to burn for Jesus. Ha! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Set my life on fire for you. <laughs> oh, for you. Oh. Set my life on fire for you. For you. Oh, set my life in order, Jesus. That is my cry every day. Oh, oh Lord, set my life on fire for you, for you. Oh Lord. Set my life in order for you, for you, oh, oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, oh, for you, oh, Set my life in order for you. Oh, for you. I want to know your heart. I want to know your way. That is my prayer. I want to know your way. I want to walk like you. Oh. I want to talk like you. Oh. I want to like you. Oh, Jesus. There is nothing to pray for again. I don't see what, else. what do I need to ask because God again? I just to be in line with Jesus. Oh, just to be in line with Jesus. Hallelujah. That is what I pray for every day. I want to be burning for Jesus. I want to be burning for Him. Oh, nothing. There is nothing on earth. It's all about Jesus. Oh. Nothing. Flesh, nothing, 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 nothing. Somebody who died for me. I want to know the heart of Jesus. <laughs> I want to know your way. I want to walk with Jesus. Born for you. Oh, oh no. Set my heart on fire for you. For you. Oh no. Set my life in order for you. Oh, for you. Oh, Lord, set my 
my heart on fire for you. Let me burn for you. Oh Lord, set my life in order for you. Oh, for you. I want to know your way. Somebody who died for me, what do I need again? I just want him to set my life in order. I just want Jesus to set my way in order. Hallelujah. I just saw this music. Hallelujah. My prayer every day, God sets me in line with you. What will it profit me? I gain everything and the day I die, I will not make heaven. Yesterday we went to bury a ground to bury somebody. And I see the way people are lying down. Uh, we are, uh, the way we buried the man yesterday was exactly where his grandfather was buried. Now, when we came there, this grandfather was no longer in that tomb. Hallelujah. They need to clear the sand. The grandfather, they buried, they are stunned to sand. They clear the sand and plaster the place again, paint it again, and bury the man there. What do you think? After many years now, his son will die. And they go back there because I discovered that is their family tomb where they bought in burial ground. They will go there and clear the ground again. And they will bury the son again. And where is the father? The father will be no more. What am I if I am not in line with Jesus? What am I if I'm not doing the will of Jesus? What am I if I'm not making Jesus happy? What am I if I am not working for Jesus? What am I? What am I life am I living if I'm not pleasing Jesus? What life am I living if I'm not pleasing Jesus? I love this music. He says, set my heart on fire to be burning for you. Set my life in order to be burning for you. I want to talk like you, Jesus. I want to walk like you, Jesus. Though we are human beings, we make mistakes. Hallelujah. Good morning, Johnson. Hallelujah. We make mistakes because we are human. But the God we serve, if you are ready for God to enlighten you, no matter how you make a mistake, He will surely bring you back. Hallelujah. He will surely bring you back. Hallelujah. Set my heart on fire. Set my life in order. Let us pray that prayer if you are online. Begin to pray wherever you are. Lord Jesus, I rededicate my life to you. Set my heart on fire for you. Set my life in order for you. Wherever you are, help me and begin to pray that prayer. Hallelujah. Set my heart on fire for you. I want to be burning for Jesus. Every morning I wake up, all I'm thinking, Jesus, thank you, you made me to be alive today. I see a beautiful day. I am always happy every time. I can't stop crying for this music, for this song I'm hearing this morning. Hallelujah. All I desire is to burn for Jesus. All I desire is to long for Jesus. All I desire is to cry for Jesus. All I desire is to request for the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. Set my life on fire for you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Begin to pray wherever you are. Set my heart on, on fire, Jesus. For you, only you, Jesus. Ha. I want to know your way. I want to burn for you. Hallelujah. Kabi talia de kosha tayaba. Izutrele gondulaniana malato shatayaba. I want to know your words. I want to know your word. I want to know your way, Jesus. I want to follow your days of my life. I want to please you. What am I cry every day is to please you. I long to make you happy. Jesus, I want to know your way. I want to please you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, set my heart on fire. Set my life in order to walk align with you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Ooh, 
hallelujah god bless you so much wherever you are watching this morning hallelujah you are all welcome click on the share button so that others can join us to receive this message this morning you are all blessed in the name of jesus if you have your bible you pick up with me there is something i saw in the scripture we need to study this morning hallelujah remember this evening we are talking on marriage without tears and i believe you are ready for that topic marriage without tears is it possible to have marriage without tears we are about to find out this evening hallelujah 6 p.m nigerian time make sure you are on that meeting you might have something to contribute there are questions that are bubbling boiling in your heart all this while you want to ask those questions you ask those questions hallelujah i'm teaching on this morning and praying on what i title deliverance by sacrifice hallelujah hallelujah if you are already online, help me and share this video so that our brothers and sisters can join us. Wherever they are, may you be blessed in the name of Jesus. And I tell you, you're going to watch me on YouTube. There are too many videos, but the one I preach in Kenya is that the one I also preach in South Africa. There are too many of my videos. You're going to go online and go to YouTube and click on Charles Oka for free man. Hallelujah. You will see a lot of my videos there you watch those videos it will uplift your spirit hallelujah god bless you david akram may you be blessed in the name of your deliverance by sacrifice my prayer for you today is that god will give all of us total deliverance in the name of jesus christ in this meeting god will give all of us total deliverance in the name of jesus christ i have two places i want to read this morning so wherever you are get connected for god is about to do a wondrous work in your life hallelujah i went to pray for a brother it should be on thursday hallelujah i went to pray for a brother on wednesday i finished praying for him on wednesday hallelujah that was the same wednesday i prayed uh, let there be light hallelujah i pray let there be light on when okay uh, speak the word on wednesday i say speak the word after speaking the word i went to pray for a brother in his house and after praying for him, although well, before then i have given a prophet i say brother i see two heavy car two jeeps coming to your house he already have Mezdis and Toyota and I see him buying Toyota and Mezdis again these are the two products I see him buying Jeep hallelujah and on Wednesday we went there we started praying there is a business that have been hanging all this while oh good morning my brother pastor Nobu Madoka God bless you sir how is Golibe and your family may God bless you so much I send my greetings to Golibe tell Golibe that Chima Amanda is greeting her hallelujah so we went there on Wednesday and begin to speak the word as we said on the in, uh, on Wednesday. Hallelujah. We thought we discussed about speak the word. Keep saying it until it becomes flesh. Hallelujah. We went there. I reminded him again. I said, brother, God has shown me a car. God has shown me a jeep you are about to buy. So I begin to speak that word there. All of us started praying in faith. On Thursday, he made a huge sales that gave him a heavy profit. Hallelujah. Which it blessed me a little from it and yesterday being such friday he sent me a message that he has bought a jeep toyota hallelujah i pray for somebody who is watching this video that your blessing is coming in the name of jesus christ i don't know what you need but within 48 hours from now there is a god in heaven that did it for that brother that god will do it for you in the name of jesus christ there is a god who provided for him that god will provide provide for you in the name of Jesus Christ wherever you are let the blessings of God that makes rich and add no sorrow come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ you are blessed in whatever you do in the name of Jesus Christ this morning we are looking into 
what I title deliverance by sacrifice. Hallelujah. A lot of people don't want to listen to this word, but this is the word that can give you what you are looking for. A lot of us have been fighting, struggling for too long. How long will you struggle and fight? Hallelujah. I had a story of a sister. The sister says she went to somewhere and they told her that somebody is dragging your, your, your husband and the prophet told her how much and called the name of everyone and she confirmed that this person had been calling her husband at all times. Hallelujah. And her husband about to break out of the house, and this person went and gave a seed of forty-five thousand, forty-five thousand in witchcraft altar, and said a witch doctor to perform a charm for her. Hallelujah! Why this woman was giving this testimony? Why the prophet, the witch doctor, collected this money and did a charm for this woman? And this woman gave to the husband, and the husband he really ate it and started changing his character towards the wife and this woman said true true she has he had been seeing the number of this woman written hallelujah written on the um, uh, calling the husband all the time so that very day she went to the prophet he said prophet what do i do the prophet said you need to pray the woman said i'm coming the woman went to her account and withdraw four hundred and fifty thousand. remember the other woman gave forty five thousand to which doctor she now went and withdrew four hundred and fifty thousand and drop on altar and say pastor if you have a god this man dropped forty five thousand in witchcraft altar i am dropping four hundred and fifty thousand in god's altar use it and buy musical equipment here and let me see if there is god if there is god let's sacrifice speak against sacrifice and that was how that woman regained her home again hallelujah a child of god that is a healthy deliverance in sacrifice whenever you pay a sacrifice there is a big deliverance coming to it so wherever you are to Today, we are studying on this deliverance by sacrifice. This is the major way you break through. My prayer for you today, by the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, receive your heavy deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. I raise the sacrifice Jesus paid on the cross of Calvary, and I command your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you wherever you are. Let there be a total deliverance. Every power that is rising against you, may God rise against them this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, you open with me Second Kings chapter 3. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Good morning. God bless you so much. Can you hear me wherever you are watching from? Hallelujah. God bless you so much wherever you are watching. Can you hear me? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, you comment. Let me comment. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bible with me, you open with me. Second Kings chapter 3. That is where I am praying and preaching with this morning. You need to hear this revelation so that you will know the next level, the next step to take. Hallelujah. Oh, I love this music. Hallelujah. All right, you can hear me. Bless. Hallelujah. Can you hear me, my James? Set my eyes on fire for you. Can you hear me, Bright Johnson? Hallelujah. Arado Shataya Baladaba. Lidelego Shatalada Balada Baladaba. Is anybody hearing me over there? Thank you, Jesus. He could tell go shatayaba for you. 
I think the network is very clear here. Oh, some people are not replying me this morning. Bakusha Taya Balada Baradosha. All right. I can see people are hearing me. All right. Let's flow. A lot of people don't want to hear this topic, but this topic is actually real. Hallelujah. I'm doing very great. Emma James. I hope you can hear me very clearly. Hallelujah. Open your Bible with me, the book of Kings. If you are reading, you should read chapter 3 from verse 1 to the end. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you a little part of this story. Oh, God bless you so much wherever you are watching from. Thank you for replying with me. Deliverance by sacrifice. Let's first of all read this book of Kings. Hallelujah. I'm not going to talk much about this. Hallelujah. This one already speaks itself. The Bible says here, let me just read chapter 3 from verse 1. Chapter 3, I read verse 1. Now Jeroboam, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaritan for 18 years of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. Hallelujah. Now we go over to, we go over to verse 24. Let's read, okay, verse 20. Let's read 20. And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was off offer that behold there came water by the way of Edom and the country was filled with water hallelujah I'm reading 2nd Kings chapter 3 verse 21 when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them they gathered all that they were able to put on armor and upward and stood in the border and they arose up early in the morning and the sun shone upon the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood, and the kings are surely slain, and they have smitten one another. Now therefore mob to spoil. Hallelujah. Follow me, please. Verse 24. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites so that they fled. Listen, the Israelites smote the Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward, smiting the Moabites even in their country. The Moabites, the Moabites, there were war against Israelites versus the Moabites. There are people that are called Moab, Moab in the Bible. Moab were fighting with the Israelites. Now the Israelites were winning. In the battlefield, they fight them, kill them. They ran away to their house. Israelites pursued them into their house also and was killing them in their house. Verse 25, and they beat down the cities on every good piece of the land and cast every man the stone and filled it and they stopped all the walls all the wells of the water and filled all the good trees only in the kihaset left there the stones thereof how be it the slangers went about it and smote it in it verse 26 and when the king of Mabai saw that the battle was too sore for him he took with him 700 men that drew sword to break through even unto the king of Edom but they could not he took 700 men to go and fight when he see that the battle is too much for him when he see that he could not prevail he gathered 700 men to win the battle yet 700 men could not give him the battle look at what this man did verse 27 then he took his eldest son that should have reign in his instead and offered him for a bond offering upon the wall and there was a great indignation against Israel and they depart from him and return to their own land hallelujah deliverance by sacrifice this is a story a war that is written in the bible in the book of second kings chapter 3 that is written in the bible israelites we are fighting battle with the mob hallelujah why the battle become too much for the mobites what do i do the mobites have done everything it takes they have gone to hired men hefty men to fight the battle for them but the hefty men could not win their battle hallelujah when these men discovered that they could not win the battle the bible said that they 
king of Moab went and called 700 men to fight the battle for him. Even the 700 men he brought could not win the battle for him. And the Bible says he went and took his eldest son, the prince that's supposed to rule after him, and sacrificed him on the wall and said, God, I sacrifice this son to you. <coughs> I sacrifice this son to you when he sacrificed his oldest son. The Bible says, and the anger of God turned against the Israelites, and the Israelites left them, and that was the end of the battle. Hallelujah. What am I trying to say? Deliverance by sacrifice. The child of God, there are too many of us watching this video. You have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing has happened. If I, at a point that when pastor give you prayer, you say, pastor, I don't pray now. What do you want me to do again hallelujah you are fasted and fasted that is not working child of god there are things that are troubling us in our life and we're not going to settle it by just shouting you need a sacrifice to break through you need a sacrifice to break through. You need giving to break through. Hallelujah. Life is given. What you give is what you take. What you sow is what you reap. Hallelujah. You don't reap what you don't sow. You don't get what you don't sow. You don't get a payment where you don't work. Hallelujah. So this is the secret and the principle of life. There is power in giving. Hallelujah. And we are talking about giving today. There is power in sacrifice. A lot of people have prayed. Many years ago, they called me a praying machine in this Lagos state. Many years ago, I can pray down this building. Many years ago, I can stand for hours and pray. Many years ago, I can pray and pull down mountain. Many years ago, I can pray and pull down pillars. Many years ago, I can I can pray, I can fast, but the more I pray and fast, the more I become poor. The more I pray and fast, the more I go down. The more I pray and fast, the more I become hungry. After fasting, there is no food to eat. After fasting, there is nothing to do. Until I started hearing teachings of men of God like this. I used to hear it many years ago. But whenever they teach about giving, I thought that these men of God are teaching so that I can give to them. I never know that their teaching is for me to give and be blessed. Hallelujah. So from that very day, I make up my mind one day i said this teaching this man of god used to teach this giving they used to say all the time let me start practicing it and see if this thing works believe me child of god i did it for three months and my life never remained the same again from that day i started giving now one day i asked myself what do i have to give i don't have money then to give i don't have a new cloth to give i remember i have an old clothes i used to wear and there are men of god i am better than they love those clothes i used to wear what do i do i started from those clothes i am wearing i started from that two shoes i have i give out one hallelujah i started giving people who love if i am wearing clothes and somebody say i like this clothes i will give it to the person i see is an avenue for me to get blessed is an avenue for me to get favor i give it to them child of god from that very moment i started receiving favor from that moment i started receiving gifts from that moment i started seeing food to eat from that moment i started receiving a call come and do this and i'll give you something from that moment when I go to places, I receive something. Before then, no matter how I preach, nobody gives me money. No matter how I sweat, they will only tell me, ah, you really try. You are a spiritual man. You are a bulldozer. You can pray well. May God bless you. And I walk away. Even sometimes, transport fare of using to go to church. I will not see transport fare right now. Hallelujah. But when I started practicing the giving, I don't pray for too long again. I only know some principles in the Bible. And when I take up the principle that giving works for itself, hallelujah. Deliverance by sacrifice. Somebody might say this man is teaching this is one of them. He's teaching this so that you can give to him. Hello, I'm not telling you so that you can give to me. If God says you should give to me, you give. If God is not telling you, don't try it. It will not work for you. I used to tell people, if I'm teaching about giving, if you don't have faith, don't come out. 
if you don't have faith, don't give. Because if you don't have faith, it will not work for you. Sometimes we do it carnally. When you do it carnally, it doesn't work for you. This man sacrifices his son. He sacrifices his son. And I know God will now say, good morning, you are welcome. God will now say, wow, this man is not one of my followers. This man is not my son. But now my sons are sacrificing ram. My sons are sacrificing bread. My sons are sacrificing a little, but this man now who does not worship me have recognized my place and have sacrificed his son. And when this sacrifice was made, the Bible say, and God turned against his people. Why? Because this man is not teaching the people of God what they should do. I'm going deep. I'm right to lay foundation. Now, can we go to the story of Abraham? God was not a friend of Abraham until Abraham sacrificed his only son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes God has given you something. What God gives to you is not a bread. Sometimes what God has given to you is not bread. What God gives to you is a seed to sow. You need to have that knowledge. One of my prayer for you today is that you should remember, have a knowledge of what God has given to you. Sometimes God gives you, you are praying for God to give you a job. And now God has given you a job. You don't remember the less privilege. You don't remember the orphans. You don't remember the widows. You don't remember the pastor that was praying for you. All you could remember is your friends in the club. All you could remember is your friends in a beer parlor. You are going from one club to club. You have so many gears. You buy champagne. You smoke shisha. You smoke this. You take drugs. And when the money finishes, your eyes will be open. You remember, Pastor. Don't worry. Come. We will still pray. My work is to pray. But I must have to tell you the truth. Sometimes God has given you that job. The first salary you receive is not your money. It's a seed. Sometimes the first salary you receive, second salary is not your money, it's not for consumption, it's a seed. Mary Ann, please send me a message after now, inbox me after now, I've been looking for a way to call you, hallelujah. Or you call me after this message, call me around 9 a.m., Mary Ann, hallelujah. So this is how God wants it to be. Look at the story of Abraham. God was the one who called Abraham. All oh, Abraham, come out from your father's house. Come out from your kindred. Come out from where you are. And I will make you a father of all nations. Yeah, God has promised Abraham. The way God has promised most of us that are watching this. God has promised Abraham what he wants Abraham to be. Whom he wants Abraham to be. But Abraham could not be that person. Because God is expecting something from Abraham. Abraham need to do what others cannot do so that he can attain the height God wants him to get to. So Abraham had been following God. Abraham had been doing what God wants him to do. Abraham had been walking the way God wants him to go. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Abraham had been doing the things God wants him to do until one day God gave Abraham a son. Hello. God gave Abraham the promise he had been promising him, a son he had been promising him all this while. And Abraham got the son. Now Abraham is rejoicing with the son. One day God said to him, Abraham, that son I've given to you, go and sacrifice the son for me. Most times, the first blessing God gave to us, we are rejoicing, is for sacrifice. Most times, that thing you are holding, until you sacrifice it, God cannot give you another one. Most of us are holding our Isaac too, too tight. And as long as you are holding your Isaac too tight, you don't want to release it. God will not give you other Isaac. Most of us are holding our Isaac. We don't want to release it. We are want to be taking it small, small, peeping out and be eating it small, small. Most of us, God has been ministering in your heart to do something and you want to hear audible voice. The same way your helpers have never had audible voice. You don't need to hear. I was preaching somewhere and I say God told me. One brother came out and said, Pastor, what of if God did not tell me? Hello? You don't wait to hear audible voice. Sometimes God will tell you in your mind. If you are waiting to hear audible voice to give out your Isaac, that means you are telling your helpers to hear audible voice. 
You are telling your helpers to hear audible voice. You are telling your business partners to hear audible voice. Child of God, sometimes you need to move without anybody telling you. One day I have a television here. A prophecy has been telling me that I will go to South Africa. A prophecy has been telling me for two years I bought I bought a, a, um, what is it, a passport. I have a passport in the house. My passport spent two years in the house and I couldn't travel. Hallelujah. And I couldn't travel. And the passports have been there, lying down there. And every day I'm a praying machine. Every day at midnight, I ga, 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 ga. Yet nothing was working. Yet I travel, I couldn't travel. Until one day I begin to search all over my house there was no valuable thing nothing i value much except my television hallelujah i carried that television the only thing i value much god did not speak to me hello sometimes we want to get to the next level and we don't want to release what is in this level for example i'm holding this white scarf if i don't open my hand and release it another thing cannot enter my hand if I'm closing my hand very tight like this, nothing enters the hand. Then I will be only enjoying that little I have. So if I need a bigger one, I need to release this smaller one. And a bigger one will be dropping my hand. Hallelujah. So now I saw what do I do? The television is the only valuable thing I have in my house. I did not hear God speak to me, but I told myself because of the knowledge I have with the word of God, what Abraham did, he gave his valuable thing to God. So that very day, I pulled my television. I went to church very early in the morning. I drop it on God's altar and lie down there. I don't want my pastor to know I'm the one dropping it because I'm not giving it to pastor. Hallelujah. I don't want any church member to see me because I'm not giving to church member. Nothing consigned me with a church member. I believe there is a God on that altar. So early morning I came. I was the third person that came to church. I dropped the television on the church. I lied down on the altar. I say, where is the God of this altar? Where is the God of this altar? Where is the God of this altar? carry this television and bless my life break this protocol break this yoke what is this power that are fighting me that i have not broken what is this ancient power that are keeping me in one place what is this power from my father's house mother's house that have refused me to go carry this television and break those power you are bigger than those powers when i dropped that television i left follow me what happened i am saying the truth this is the word of god if i'm lying may god disgrace me hallelujah i did that thing on thursday then i've applied for south africa and the visa could not come because i don't have money to bring out the visa hallelujah why i was coming um i i did that thing on thursday and i'm preaching in anglican church that same thursday i preach on i did that thing on thursday morning in our service and i came to preach on in anglican church st paul's anglican church kirikiri in in lagos state here i came to preach in church thursday evening after preaching thursday evening i left i came back again to preach the second day friday evening after preaching friday evening a brother was coming to me excuse me sir excuse me sir i said what's the problem he said please sir, i want to see you i said i don't used to see people after preaching he said please sir, you must see me unless if you don't want something to happen i not turn back he said please take this sim this is the most valuable item i have this is the Remember, I gave the television the most valuable item I have. The brother came, he said, this is the most valuable item I have. Since Thursday you enter preaching, something was speaking inside me to give you the most valuable item I have. But because it's valuable to me, I am using it for business. I don't know how to release it. Pastor, I don't know how to release it. That's why I went on with it. But today, Friday, you are preaching again. I am uncomfortable. I cannot rest i don't want to run mad collect it i'm telling you reality god bear me witness i collect it and lay hand on that brother and say because you have given me what you think you valued most god will give you what he valued most by god's grace today that brother showed me the head of a trailer a trailer you know trailer the head of you know how much they are selling head of a trailer that brother who said this is what he valued most. now today he has trailer 
Hallelujah. This is what God can do. He finished giving me this on Thursday, on Friday. Then on Saturday, I went to preach in another church again. On Friday, while I was preaching in another church, as I was coming down from the pulpit, the pastor who hosts me in Agoda, Lagos State, Hallelujah, Glorious Saints Cathedral, the pastor who hosts me in Agoda on Sunday, after preaching, he said, follow me to his house. I followed him to his house. We finished discussing the parlor. He went inside the room and came out and brought a phone. I've given the phone out. I think since then I've used up to three or four phones or five phones. He brought out a phone. He said, this phone, I bought it from America and I wanted to give it to my wife. But actually, I don't know what I've been keeping me to keep it here. But while we were preaching, something was telling me inside me to give it to you. He gave me the phone. How many phones have I received? Two. Hi, how many phones? Two. After preaching that Sunday, he came to me again. He brought out an envelope and gave to me. He said, this is 100,000. It belongs to you. The church where you get to say, I should give it to you. Huh? I've never received 100,000 from a church before then. He said, church size should give it for the first time. I never hear that. And they gave me 100,000. And before that very Sunday, Sunday to Tuesday, I've received 80,000. What did I receive? Hallelujah. What did I receive? I received two phones and 180,000 under five days. Now, tell me, how much is the television? Television I gave was 38,000. Then, that means then I have 180,000 and I have two phones. And that is how God wants a deliverance by sacrifice. I am not just preaching what I see in the Bible. Whatever I see in the Bible and I need it, I practice it. So whenever I come to preach, I tell you by example. I am don't just talk, I walk. And that was what that opens international door from me. From there, the road started opening. So my prayer for somebody today, as you're about to practice this, from now henceforth, let heaven open for you. May your blessing that are in the east, west, north, and south locate you. May your helpers, wherever they are, locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. So many times I have been, every time I sit down, I want to be listening. I want God to speak to me, to give to somebody. But of a day, I now say to myself, no, the Bible say the same cup you used to measure for somebody will be used to measure for you. So for that very day, I decided to start giving people without them asking. And that is the kind of favor God has, is giving to me now. I started giving people things without them asking. Like today, we are going to orphanage home today. Hallelujah. We are going to orphanage home today. So those orphanage home where we are going to, they did not ask us. They did not beg us. They don't even know we are coming. So, and that is what I used to pray. Lord, as we give people without them knowing we are coming, as we give people without them asking us, as I wake up and sleep, I become sleepless, be sleepless nights because of somebody. Let somebody to be, to have sleepless nights because of me. That's what I do. And I go and give. So when we wake up, joy. Now, I want to ask you, Joy, you need your own children. I'm going to pray for you. But how many times have you gone to charity home this year? How many times have you visited the orphanage home this year? Hallelujah. Whatever you need, give it to somebody. You have money. Whatever you need, you give it to somebody. Anything you want God to give you, give to somebody. And that is how it works. I don't know what is troubling you. There are powers in my father's house that have been holding me on the ground for too long. But one day I got up and said, wow, this man in the Bible, he is not a Christian. He is not a child of God. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 3, the king of Moab is not a God. He is a pagan. He worship idol. But that very day, he discovered that there is a God bigger than his idol. He sacrificed his eldest son for God while he sacrificed and the battle ended in his favor I want to pray for somebody here to this morning as many that want to practice this this morning may the favor of God come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ A lot of people that are watching me, they see the way I do in my marriage. And they're asking me, what is the secret? I want your marriage, my marriage to be like yours. Hello, you can you do what I do? We used to sing, Abraham blessings are mine. Abraham blessings are yours. Can you do what Abraham did? 
Can you take the risk Abraham take? Can you give what Abraham gave? Can you tell God that there is nothing matters except God? Can you tell God that there is nothing valuable in your life except God? Hallelujah. And this is this. Abraham blesses Samai. Can you sac- can, do you have hearts to do what Abraham did? If God asks you to give your car, can you give your car? If God asks you to give your land for the ministry, can you give your land? If God asks you to buy a land, can you buy? We have been asking money for all where we can worship God for too long. And a lot of us have the money and we are not doing it. Yet we want God to do something in our life. I marvel at some people. I'm a brother from that met me on social media like this. He called me. He said to me, sir, I am coming back to Nigeria from Brazil. Please pray for me, for Johnny Mercy. When I come, I will give you tight. I will give this one. I will come in your church and thank God. I, will, I told him I don't have a church. He said, don't worry. When I come back, I will help to build the church. And I started praying. Hallelujah. I don't know why he was coming. While he came, I prayed. After praying, this young man came. He didn't tell me he has landed. It was his friend that told me has landed. After two days, he sent me a message, man of God, I've landed. Hallelujah. And after that, he went back again to Brazil without coming to my house. Without even the tithe. Without even an offering. Without even calling on phone. He went to Brazil and sent me, he said, man of God, please, I've gone to Brazil. Forgive me. I have an urgent call. That's why I went back. Please pray for me again for Johnny Mercy. I prayed again. He said, when I come back, don't worry. We will build the church. I will buy you a land. I will build. I will buy this one. I will buy the other one. I said, don't worry. It's not today. Not today. I don't hear those things. I have been hearing those things. I'm tired of. I don't want to hear again. Don't tell me. Do. I didn't ask him again. He came back to Nigeria and he traveled back again. While he was about traveling, I called him. I said, what type of business are you doing? I discovered he was doing drug business. And I called his friend. I said, this young man, he didn't know whom I am. And he don't know the covenant I have with God. You don't make a promise you will not fulfill. You know you will not fulfill a promise. You don't call. Don't make a promise. Don't think you have escaped. Don't think you are a big man. Don't think you are strong. You are not stronger than God. Hallelujah. Don't think you are stronger than God. Why this young man left? Hallelujah. The, he was coming back. I call his brother, his friend. I said, he think that he is now the one protecting himself and tell him to stop that business he's doing because that thing will swallow him. Why he was about, I told his brother, I said his friend, I said, tell him, he's the one who's, he wake up, he woke me up from my sleep and say, pray for him for Johnny Mercy. That's the prayer. Pray for me for Johnny Mercy. And I will give you one tenth, which he call about too much money. He said, and I will help to build a church. I said, tell him if he did not bring those things, those things will swallow him. I'm not the owner. I don't know him. I've not seen him. Right now, the brother was caught on the way and he's now in the prison. That money, he's not spending it. He freedom, he did not have it now. That money, he did not give it. And he will come out empty and start fresh again. That is what we have been doing. We make promises. A lot of us, when there is money, we make a pledge, we stand up, we promise heaven and earth. Not mainly in the church. We we'll promise this widow, don't worry, I will do it. And the money came. You have the money, but you went to beer palo to drink. You have the money, you went to drink champagne. You have the money, you went to club. You promise a widow, don't worry, man. When I come back, I will do something. Don't worry, I will pay your children's school you are make a vow you don't need to say those things when you want to do it get up and do it i'm not talking on people who does not have it i'm talking on people who made the promise and they have it and they did not fulfill abraham actually because i'm an intercessor i'm still praying for god to show him mercy and release him because he's my brother he's a human being but god need to teach him a little lesson you don't raise your shoulder for god God is the one that has been leading our going out and coming back. God is the one that has been on our side. If you remove God from your life, you die. God is the reason why we are still alive, no matter who you are. If you are still alive, don't think because you have power, because it's that juju minus God, that juju will not help you. Minus God, that juju will not sustain you. Do you know pastor die? Witch doctor die, rich man die, poor man die, every man on earth dies. Because it's only God that can that have the remedy for death. It's only God that can say you will not die, you will not die. My prayer for you today, may God open your eyes to understand the mystery of giving. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Most of all did not know that giving work faster than 21 days praying and fasting. Now the question is this, somebody might ask a question, Pastor, I have been giving but nothing is working. Now it depends on where you are giving. It depends on where you are giving, number one. Number two, it depends on the mind you are using to give. Two places, it depends on where you are giving. It depends on the heart you are using to give. It depends your relationship with God and with your neighbors. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, if you are coming to God's altar to give an offering and you have grudges with your brother, he said, drop the offering there. Go back and reconcile with your brother before you bring the offering. And sometimes we are having so many bad intentions. We are having so many bad thoughts in our hearts and we are bringing a seed and offering to God. It can't work. And that's why you are not calling and blaming the prophet because they are not teaching you the word. If the seed and the offering and the tithes you are bringing must work for you, you need to be at peace with God. The Bible says if a man's way please God, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hallelujah. So you need to make your ways to please God. Hallelujah. God bless you so much, Loretta. Hallelujah. And that is what God wants you to do. You need to live a way the way God wants you to live. You need to walk in the light of God. I pray for somebody today. May God open your eyes to understand the mystery of sacrifice in the name of Jesus Christ. Deliverance by sacrifice. This man sacrifices only son. Abraham, the Bible say, until the day Abraham sacrificed his son, God now say, now I know. One day God called him Abraham, go and sacrifice the only son I gave to you. If God call you now to sacrifice the son he gave to you, can you do that? Now, somebody said, I can't hear God. How can you hear God when you don't read God? You can't hear God because you don't read the word of God. God is speaking to all of us every day, but we don't understand. Most of us understood, but we don't want to hear. And that is why you don't want to hear the same way our helpers don't want to hear. Because if you can hear God, your helpers can hear God. A lot of us are dying because you are waiting for God to call you. Just so careful. Just so careful. Or you get up today, being Saturday, go to orphanage home. God will not tell me something like that. God, I want me. Let make giving your lifestyle. You don't give because you hear God. You don't give because you have too much money. You give because that is the easiest way to survive. Giving is living. Giving is living. I'm going to orphanage home today. We're going to buy a lot of things. But most of those things I'm buying is not in my house. Most of those things I'm buying, my sisters are in need of it. Most of those things I'm buying, I need it. There is no rice again in my house. Hallelujah. The bag of rice I bought three weeks ago was using a program. Hallelujah. But I'm buying a bag of rice for them. There is so many things I'm buying for them is no longer in my house. We don't have it. We need it. I am not buying because we have excess. I am not visiting them because we have excess. Hallelujah. I am not doing it because I have it everywhere. I am doing it because that is the way to live. That is a way to survive. You don't be selfish. God did not bless you for your personal consumption. God bless you for your generational consumption. Did you know what he tell Abraham? He tell Abraham, you shall be blessed. And through you, the whole nation shall be blessed. He said, I shall bless you that you serve that blesses you shall be blessed. So whatever you think you have now no matter how little god has given it to you for people around you not mainly you i did not live on earth for myself i live on earth for people around me i am surviving for people around me hallelujah and that is why i i got up every month i have a covenant i i told you i have a vow i make to god Every Sunday, I must bring 1,000 naira and drop in the, in the fuel bus. I say, God, I am joining, assisting. I want to go for evangelism, but I don't have money to join them. I don't have time to join them for the evangelism. I have other works I'm doing right now. But God, I can't join them for the evangelism. Let me contribute for the fuel they will be using to go for the evangelism. Let me contribute for their transport fare. So what do you think that happens? The more they go for evangelism and win a soul, I join them to win the soul. And the Bible says, there is a joy in heaven when the soul is warm. If there is a joy in heaven when a 
the soul is won. What do you think that will be the mind of God to the person that won the soul? He will win a prize. And they are the one that won the soul, but I'm the one that transport them to win the soul. What do you think that will happen? As they're receiving their prize, I'm also receiving their prize. Because if I don't transport them, they will not win the soul. So every Sunday, I pay for fuel for them to go. Hallelujah. What happened? Every first week of the, of the month, I look for one orphanage home and visit. No matter how no matter how big and how rich I am. What am I doing that? Lord, trouble somebody somewhere to remember me. A time we came, you see what I'm doing now? I, it might take me one year, it might take me two years, I will do it. And God will wake somebody up and tell that person. Very soon you will see it. And tell that person, a hundred people, because what one thing you, you sow one seed, you don't get one seed. Oh, you drop one corn, you sow one corn, do you get one corn? you grow a maze and too many of them so if i am doing this every month i am doing this i am doing this every month what do you think that will happen in time to come god might raise 50 men 100 men who will be giving me something every month that's how god works god is doing this god is watching my heart am i doing it for my personal consumption am i doing it because i have something to eat so sometimes god will allow things to dry from your life god will allow money to dry from you and reserve a little to see if you will still do that thing Hallelujah. God, sometimes God wants to know the reason. What is the motive behind whatever we do? And that is why sometimes God will fold his hand. You have called God and called God. God have not answered. Mainly when you have made a promise to goose give something. God have not answered. God is trying to see what is it. God will ask you, what do you think? What, why is, are you doing this? What is your motive? Why you are doing this? What is your plan? Why you are doing this? Hallelujah. So these are the things you must do. All right, let me go down to the scripture well. After this, and this man sacrificed his son. Do you know that after this, this person did this thing, Abraham sacrificed his Isaac and God said, now I know. Now I know you trust me. You need to live a life where you trust God to survive. You don't trust in your strength to survive again. You don't trust in your wisdom to survive again. Like me, I told somebody, nobody pays me tight. I don't survive. Nobody, no, there is no Sunday I am expecting tight. There is no day I am expecting offering. No day I am expecting tight. For 11 years of my preaching, 11 years of my preaching, there is no day I am sitting somewhere expecting one Sunday, one service that people are bringing tight. What do you think that happened? I have survived it for 11 years so if i start a church now because i've lived for 11 years without expecting tithe when if you give tithe or offering when i start a church it doesn't consign me because i've trained my body i've trained my faith not to look onto tithe look onto god all my mind is focused on God. What do I do for you every day? This early morning, I woke up meditating. And my wife asked me, what is that? I said, I am meditating with the Lord. I came and put this music. Hallelujah. I want to know God the more. My heart is burning. My heart is on fire for God. The more I know God, the more I want to know God. The more I see God, the more I want to see God. Hallelujah. So that, that I came and put this music. I say, God, set my life in order for you. Set my heart on fire. Let me my heart be burning for Jesus. Any place I am, let all I'm thinking is all about Jesus. What do I do to make Jesus happy today? What do I do? Is there anything I should do to make that's what I'm thinking? I don't drink, I don't smoke. I've never smoked before. God, what do I do to make you happy? Where do I go to make you happy? Who do I make happy to make you happy? And while I was thinking that, God now took me to book of Matthew. While I am thinking, what do I do to make you happy? Where, what do I say? Where do I go to make you happy? And God took me to the book of Matthew 25. Read a scripture. From 31. Look at what the Bible says. Matthew 21, 25, 31. I want you to be asking that question every day. God gives you a life without asking you for payment. What are you giving to God in return? How are you rewarding Jesus for giving you life? Every day you survive. And most of us, when you travel and come back, you end up in a beer parlor. I have a brother who just came back from Italy. 
I have him every time I see him on social media. He is in one joint drinking, one joint drinking from here to here. He didn't come here. He spent up to two, three weeks because I keep seeing him in Nigeria here, in Benin. He now came back again. He, he came in through Lagos State. I'm from Lagos, enter Veco to Benin. I live in Lagos. He came back again after three weeks and enter Veco, enter flight again from Benin down to Lagos and Lagos back to Europe. And after many days or many weeks, he called me on phone. He said, I don't know what is wrong with me. I don't know what is wrong with me. I keep seeing strange things in my dream. I keep seeing things. Pray for me. Who? And this brother was the one I've been, oh Jesus. Throughout the last two years, I, I fast with this guy. It's like I give him 14 nights on prayer on phone. And he got his document. Hallelujah. He never talked to me again after since that very day. He got the document. He never even called. Pastor, I've gotten the document. I was the one who called him one day. Hello, I hope you have gotten the document. He said, yes, I said, but you didn't tell me. Let me stop my prayer. Can you see people? Now, he has came back to Nigeria. He went to Bia Palo, enjoy with his friends, drink with his friends. Now, until he travels back, he has a problem in his health, problem on his leg. His leg could not carry him. He couldn't carry him. He remembers past again. That is one of the problems we are having in life. We remember God only when there is trouble. We remember God only when there is issue. You don't remember God when you want to praise him. Most of us, we don't call Jesus when we want to praise him. We only call Jesus when we want him to save us from danger. We only call Jesus when we want him to save us from problem. Hallelujah. And that is not the life God wants us to live. God wants us to call him both in good time and in bad time. God wants us to be with him when you are eating and when you are not eating. My prayers for you today, let this revelation open your mind as you practice the will of God. Let God start working for you from today in the name of Jesus Christ. When I was asking God, what do I do for you? Every day, I long, what do I do? Yeah. Iken Naman, are you surprised? That is people for you. I have had a case like that, several cases like that. I can't tell a lot of them. I have so many cases like that. One even came to my house after speaking big grammar, saying big, big things. Hallelujah. And these are the people. I saw this person posting something on, on Facebook, abusing pastors. I have to go and comment. Or oh, guy, you too abuse pastors. <laughs> when you were have carrying a sickness that they were deporting people that have that sickness, who do you call? It was pastor you called. You called me. Because he was carrying a sickness, a disease. And in the country where he was, they were deporting people that have that disease. He called who? Pastor. And I prayed for him. After praying, God healed him. They did not deport him. Now he's favored. After many years now, he has forgotten it was a pastor that prayed for him. He started posting pictures about pastor, commenting all these Nigerian pastors. They are fools. They are fraudsters. They are scammers. They are, they are thieves. I have to go to that his post and or guy even you. Can you see people? Or guy even you. He didn't know he went to the place. He said, Pastor, I'm, I'm not talking of you. I said, I didn't say you are talking of me. You are talking of my colleagues. I know there are evil men. But you must you say all the Nigerian pastors. Or you shouldn't use that language. There are good people for Christ's sake. You don't use those languages. Because tomorrow you will need the Nigerian pastor again. Hello, Oyibo man no sabi waiting be winch. Now you, na, winch, do the winch in Oyibo people, they use it to work science. They, they are witches, they use it to work science. Our own witches, we use it to kill our brothers and sisters. Our own witchcraft is wickedness. Their own witchcraft, they use it to manufacture something. And Oyibo can be real to you. If this person is from water spirit, he will tell you, I am from water spirit. Oibo woman, Oibo man can open up to you and tell you, I am from water. I have a snake inside of me. Nigerian will not tell you. Even he will carry the snake and still be speaking in tongues inside the church. African will not tell you. They will carry the snake inside them and still be speaking in tongues in the church. Hey, ba, 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 ba. Leave those things. And that is where we are. We, we African, we, most of, we, we fight the way we see things. Oh, you both fight the way they see things. After coming speaking big grammar, he traveled back. People who doesn't have shame, even my baby was lying down here, telling me the building, where he is building, telling me this, telling me that. I smile. All I told my wife, I said, this man, he will call me back again. 
that it will be trouble as he's going back now. He will call me back again. But do you know what happened when he called me? I will just remind him this. And when I finish reminding him, I will pray for him. Why am I reminding him this? So that he will bridle his tongues. Sometimes we use our mouth to speak evil against our future. We use our mouth to speak evil against our future. There are evil pastors everywhere. Even in Oibo, there are evil occultic pastors in Oibo land. There are evil. There is, there is no place that is 100% good. All of you that lives in abroad, even hunger is in abroad. In America, there are people sleeping on the road, on the streets for years. That They live in tents. American president, are they not seeing them? There, there is no place that have 100% good. Any place that is good, there must be something bad. Any place you see good thing, there must be something bad. Any place you see white, there is nothing you see that this thing is pure white. Anything you see that is pure white, this thing is pure white I see now. But I'm seeing a little stain. There is nothing you see that is pure white. You must see something. Let me check again. There is nothing that is, this is white again. And you see a little stain. There is nothing, you see a little stain. So, there is nothing that is pure white. Whatever you think that is white, there is a little black somewhere. Let's protect our thing. Hallelujah. That's not where I'm going to. I begin to ask God every day, God, what do I do? How do I see you? How do I make you happy? How do I, how do I make you laugh? How do I make you love me? How do I make you see good in me? And God took me in the book of Psalm, Matthew 25. If you have your Bible, I'm reading from 31. And the Bible says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divide the sheep from the goats hallelujah and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goat on his left hand hey you begin to ask yourself are you a sheep or are you a goat hallelujah they are all animal hallelujah and they are still useful but one will go to the right hand and one will go to the left hand what is sheep sheep is an animal that is obedient even obedient to the death Goat is disobedient even when you want to feed the goat. Hallelujah. Who are you? Are you obedient? Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in verse 34. And shall the king said unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Follow me verse 35. You hear what Jesus is saying. That was from the day I started asking Jesus, how do I make you happy? How do I, what do I do every morning? What do I do, Jesus? What do I do so that you will love me the more? Verse 35. He said, for I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. In verse 36, naked and you clothed me. Hallelujah. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came into me. Hallelujah. Verse 37, and they shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when did we saw we, when did we saw you hungry and we fed thee? Thirsty and we give you drink. When see we the stranger and we took you in and naked and we clothed thee. Hallelujah. Or when did we see you sick or in prison and we came and visit you? Hallelujah. Verse 40. Follow me. Verse 40. I'm reading Matthew 25. Verse 40. And the king. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. I started reading from verse 31. I'm reading from verse 40 right now. Matthew, Matthew 25. I'm reading from verse 40. And the king shall answer and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least. Did you get the scripture? Let me follow again. Verse 40. And the king shall answer and said unto them, Very I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. So whatever you do to any man, you have done it for God. You don't look for God. Most of you now, if I was in a meeting and a, a sister, I asked a sister, if Jesus come here now, what will you give to Jesus? The sister said, I will give Jesus everything. Hallelujah. He said, if Jesus come in here now, what will you give him? If Jesus appear in your house and knock, what will you give him? 
And I want to say, whatever he asks, I will give to him. I ask that one, if Jesus come in, uh, in your house and he want to sleep in your house, where will you want him to sleep? Ha! Huh, he said, I will give him the best room. Or any room you choose, I will give him. Then the question is this, I now ask you. Have you seen Jesus? They said no. Then how do you want to give Jesus? I'm reading Matthew verse 25, chapter 25, from verse 31. Hallelujah. Start from verse 31, you will understand it. Now, how will you see Jesus and give Jesus anything he asks? She says she's waiting until she sees Jesus. I say, any day you see Jesus physical, you are in heaven or you are in hell. So what do you do? Who is Jesus you are looking for? Jesus is your neighbor you are looking for. Jesus you are looking for is that neighbor that is living with you. Jesus you are looking for is that pastor, that real pastor, not occultic and witch pastor, that pastor you are seeing. That Jesus you are looking for is those friends you are seeing. That Jesus you are looking for is those orphans you are seeing. Jesus you are looking for are those widows you are seeing. Whatever you do unto widows, you have done it for God. How do I know that? The Bible says, I am the husband of the widow. So whatever you give to a wife, you have equally given to the husband. So, whatever you give to a widow, you have given it to God. I'm going to orphanage home today. I did not stop here. There are widows again I'm sending something to in the east. Hallelujah. I didn't just start stop here from the orphans. Hallelujah. Your God bless you, Lorita. I didn't just stop here. That is how I do. Hallelujah. I look for people to assist me. When I call for assistance, when they assist me, I carry out the giving. Hallelujah. Because I believe as I'm giving to them, I'm giving to Jesus. And this sister that said to me, anything Jesus asks me, I will give to him. I saw right, I am carrying Jesus. I am representing Jesus. I am asking you, I am asking you the money your wallet. Can you give to me? She couldn't give it to me the way she said. Hallelujah. We said we can give to Jesus. How can you give to Jesus you cannot see when you cannot give to the Jesus you are seeing? How can you say that Jesus is everything to you? Why you cannot give to everyone around you? How can you say that you can give well, that whatever Jesus asks you, you can give to them? Why you cannot give somebody that little peanuts they are asking you? How can you say you can give Jesus anything he asks? Why you cannot give us a little money to pay for a hall for where we can worship God? You can't buy a land where we can worship that Jesus. You said you will give everything to let me ask a question. You that is watching now, if you see Jesus now, what will you give to him? If you, 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 if you see Jesus now, what will you give to him? Whatever you think, if you see Jesus now, you can give to him. Give it to somebody by your side. There is somebody that is in need of that little money to drink water. There is somebody that is with that little money to eat. Sometimes I used to dress up from my house. I walk up to the street. I start giving to beggars on the street. I don't give to them because I'm too rich. I am giving to them because that day I want to give something to Jesus. And then I cannot see him physically. So I sing a praises I can sing to him. And I give a substance to people on the street I can give. Sometimes people call, think I'm a fool. I'm not a fool. A pastor visited me on Wednesday here. I told you, I have dollars. I have about $30 in my wallet. I brought $20 and give to him. I went in and brought a coat, a suit. I just bought and I gave to him. I said, please manage this. And when I give it to him, that very day, within 24 hours, I received money. Within 24 hours, I received money that's up to that $20 and that suit times 100. What am I trying to say? Hallelujah. This is what God wants us to do. This is exactly, you don't give because you're expecting a return from them. You are giving because this is the only way you can give to Jesus. And Jesus said in the book, he said, when I was hungry, you feed me. And they asked him, when did we see you hungry and we feed you? He said, when you give to the one of the least, verse 40. And the king just answered and said unto them, I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least, of this, my brethren, you have done it unto me. We want to give Jesus everything he needs. Everything he needs. Right now, let me start from my ministry. We need a land. We need a hall for, to worship this Jesus. You want to give everything. This Jesus we want to worship. We need a hall. We need a land. 
I'm going to orphanage home now. Write it down somewhere that every first month, week of the month, I am going to orphanage home. What will you join if you are not in Nigeria? If you are not opportune to give it to where you are, you can start with me in the country where you are. Every first week of the month, look for charity home and deposit something. You need to come to this orphanage home and see how the little children cry every day. You are looking for a baby. Start it. And that's why I tell people, that is why I, I, my marriage is working. Most of us are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want my marriage to be like your own. It's not about prayer. Can you pay a sacrifice? Before I, get, I got married, for 10 years, for 10 years, and what I do, one day I was in a school, when I was in school of theology, and one of my lecturers, I saw the way they were behaving with their wife after three children. I asked him, sir, how do you get this kind of woman that is so humble to you like this? This woman that respects you so much, look at the way you poor are living. He said to me, my brother, it took me 10 years to get to this woman. What do you do? He said, prayer and sacrifice. From that very day, what I said to myself, I started praying. And any time I see a pastor's wife behaving the way I want my wife to behave, what do I do? I go to that pastor's wife and sow a seed. And say, please, man, collect this. I will not tell them why. It's between me and God, not inside the woman. I will go and buy something for the woman. I will buy gifts for the woman. Anytime I see a pastor and the wife behaving the way I like, I will go and buy something for both of them. I keep sowing in their life. Any mother I see that this is mother or a grandmother, I go and so I say, please, I'm giving. In my heart, I say, God, I'm giving to this grandmother. She's 90 years. That my wife will reach 90 and pass. I got it by sacrifice. Any couple I see that are living together, I go to them and give them something. Sometimes I will kneel down and say, pray for me. Sometimes I will go to church and I will gather married men that are of elderly age. And I will give something and kneel down and say, pray for me. What do you think? I went to the village where the, the uh, women, we used to call them Omwada. The ladies that we are born in the family, where they are having meetings. I went there and give them something. I kneeled and said, pray for me to be a successful husband. Pray for me. At this thing, I give them something. Hallelujah. I'm coming down somewhere for what God did on his own. What do you think that I just got married within one year and I have a baby? What I do, that before I got married, every time I see little children, that is a place in my streets where I live in this Lagos state for, for seven years. Every day, every, that's not every day, sometimes once in a week or twice in a week, there is a junction where I used to meet little children. Sometimes when I come there, I see up to 40 little children, 30 little children. I will carry all of them to a shop and tell them, choose whatever you like on this shop. And they will be choosing. I will tell the woman to count it. The woman will calculate the whole money. I'll bring her money and pay. Sometimes I will sit down there and the children will be matching me dirty clothes, dirty, dirty legs. They will be matching me. I will be playing with them. So I will be, they will be matching me and their parents will be saying, oh, don't match pastor. I say, no, leave them. That dirty, they are matching me on my body is a blessing to me. They are, sometimes they will sing along with me. They will dance. Sometimes they will be playing music for me. I will be dancing at the main road. I do it like a fool until you come down like a small child. You can't get something from God. Most times, we are behaving like we are too intelligent because every time, any time you go to give, you calculate well. And that is why your helpers are calculating well. You want to help and you are calculating. If I give this one, I will not have another one remaining because you believe you are the one that is giving yourself everything. And that's why you keep giving yourself. But when you now believe in God, trust in God, Psalm 1, 2, 1 say, and I will look unto the hill from where cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord who maketh heaven and earth. My help come from God, not from my strength. By strength shall no man prevail. If you keep your mind in your strength, you will not get anything. But when you trust totally, when I mean totally, even when there is nothing, you are dancing. You have not eaten and you are dancing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. Even when there is no food to eat and you are still dancing. That is when God will say, wow, this man is not praising me because of what I have given to him. This man is not praising me because of what I will give to him. This man is praising me because he loved me. What happened in the story of Job? The Bible say, and hallelujah, oh Lord, the Bible say, and Job loved God, Job feared God because of what he had. And when Satan was passing, God called Satan, Job chapter 1, I say, oh you Satan, come here. Have you considered my servant Job? Because there is nobody like him. God said, is it not because you put hedge of fire around him? He said, go, I have removed hedge of fire. Job said to God, is it not because you have given him so many wealth? God, you have, God said to him, collect everything, don't touch his soul. 
and everything was collected from Job, yet Job refused to curse God. A lot of us, because you needed a child, because you need money, small money, because you need a child, you never know that my God can supply all your needs according to your riches in glory. You never know that God can give you everything you desire. You never know that God can give you four children at once. How many of you believe that? Four children. How many of you? How many of you? I am dreaming of four children, two boys and two girls. He's coming to a woman here. He's coming to me. He's coming to us, a woman here. Hallelujah. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Hallelujah. He's so, and Job, God, 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 God allows Satan to collect everything yet one day job never caused god every time job say i will not cause this my god i still know that my redeemer liveth even when there is no child again i still know that my redeemer liveth even when there is no food to eat again i still know that my redeemer liveth even when there is no helper again i still know that my redeemer liveth even when his friends left him i still know that my redeemer liveth even when there is nothing to survive again i still know my, my redeemer liveth even when he was sick i still know that my redeemer liveth even when that God is no longer answering him again, I still know that my Redeemer live. Even when he was sick, I still know that my Redeemer live. Even when there is nothing to survive, I still know that my Redeemer live. Even when his wife turned his back on him, I still know my the Redeemer live. I don't know about you, but I know my Redeemer live. It. I don't know about you. My Redeemer live it in my marriage. My Redeemer live it in my destiny. My Redeemer live it wherever I go to. My Redeemer live Leave it, my redeemer. In every situation, my redeemer. Leave it. God cannot die. God cannot lie. No matter the situation, my redeemer live it. No matter the circumstances, my redeemer live it. No matter where I am, my redeemer live it. Any day I die, is my redeemer that want me to die. My redeemer live. No matter the circumstances, my redeemer live it. Hallelujah. Somebody's redeemer will answer today. Your redeemer will answer you today. Jesus Christ will answer you today. Jesus Christ will answer answer you today. Jesus Christ we answer you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I now go. Let me leave this Matthew. Hallelujah. Let me go to John 3 16. If you have your Bible it's a popular place all of us knows well. Hallelujah. John 3.16, we are talking of deliverance by sacrifice. John 3.16, can we go there? Hallelujah. John 3.16, pick up your Bible, John 3.16. What the Bible say? For God so loved the world that he gave. He did what? For God so loved the world. Please click on the share button so that people can join us. For God so loved the world that he gave. He did what? He gave his only, not his one of, not his one of. He gave his only, he gave his only, only, not his one of. He gave his only begotten son. Can you give your only begotten son? Can you give your only begotten car for the work of God? Can you give that only because that only car you have, can you give it for the work of God? Can you make a call and say, go and carry that car for the work of God? Can you, make, can you give the only money you have for the work of God? I've done that. I have withdrawn the uh, money, the whole money in my account. I've done that I, with the Bible, God bear witness. I've withdrawn the whole money in my account several times, not once, not twice. I withdrew the whole money in my account and can't drop it on the altar. Nothing consigned me with pastor. I am dropping it in the name of Jesus, not in the name of pastor. Yes, it's the pastor that is collecting it because the Bible says in the book of Matthew that whenever I done it to anybody, I've done it for Jesus. Whatever I give to any human being, I've given it to Jesus. So when I go, I give it to a pastor. I give it to a pastor in the name of Jesus, not in the name of pastor. Hallelujah. So pastor, whatever you like, use the money to do. My own, I've done my own part. Jesus, I gave it in your name. Come and answer me in your name. Now, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Can you give that only land you have for the work of God? Can you give that only hundred dollars? Can you share it with the beggars on the street with you right now? Can you make it a challenge? Go out right now. As I'm going to a financial room, you go and share money to beggars on the street. 
most of them when they say less privilege years ago i used to answer that when they say less privilege i come i wonder i say i'm not a less privilege i should be giving to them and today i'm giving to them don't say all of us are poor but you used to buy drink for them you used to buy drink when you go to club the same way you buy drink for your friend leave those friends and go to streets and give to beggars you will see that blessing since you have been giving your friends beer and all these drinks what did you gain from it nothing yet most of them will turn back and stab you at the back most of them will turn back and hit you at the back most of them will turn back and hate you at the back but when you give to beggars it doesn't concern you with the beggar it concerns you with jesus who collect it is not your problem who receive it is your problem and that is jesus you are giving it in the name of jesus for god so long you don't tell me you love me and you are not giving me you don't tell you love jesus you have not given to jesus what have you given to jesus If we call now, who are those that love Jesus? You will come out. So what have you given to Jesus? He said, for God so loved the world. So God, for God to get deliverance from the world, God have to give his only son. Have you seen our topic, deliverance by sacrifice? For God to redeem the world from the hand of Satan. Satan has been holding the world. So for God to collect Satan back from the world, God has to sacrifice something more precious to him. For God to collect precious things out of the hand of that devil, God needs to sacrifice the precious things he has. You need a precious thing, sacrifice a precious thing. You need to receive a costly favor, sacrifice a costly favor. You need to receive a costly miracle, sacrifice a costly thing you have right now. You need to receive a bigger thing from God, sacrifice a bigger thing you have right now. Where is that thing that you value most? Sacrifice it right now. What is that thing you, you are holding? So when you value something most, you don't want to give a valuable thing. God cannot give you a valuable miracle. As long as you are in Christ. I'm coming this side now. Do you know that occultic people, witchcraft people, we envy witchcraft people. Do you know how they survive? They survive by sacrifice. Occultic people, money rituals, they survive by sacrifice. <laughs> money ritual does not survive by going to, no, no, no. They survive by, we envy them, but we don't pay sacrifice, half of what they pay. You want to be like that money ritual who has money, he's spending money everywhere. But can you pay sacrifice? One of the problems we are having is that when we pray and the prayers are not answered, we face the pastor. Pastor, you pray for me upon I've given money, didn't answer. Hey, you never know that God is testing you. Do you know that those money rituals, it didn't happen to them immediately. Most of them did not happen immediately. They have faith also. Most of them did not happen immediately. They give that sacrifice on their altar. Hallelujah. Most of them, they keep doing the sacrifice from, from far. They will tell them to bring a goat. From goat, bring a cow. From a cow, bring a human being. From human being, bring a baby. Bring a wife. Bring your own wife. Bring your. Then the person will enter into the before they do that. They keep luring the person. So, how, what and what have you sacrificed? You want to be rich like a. Which, like a. Uh, an evil occultic man but you don't want to sacrifice the way they have minds to sacrifice those people they have mind to sacrifice then you don't have mind to sacrifice those people they can go to their meeting and they will stand up all night in their meeting but you will not go to night vg you will not go to your own church you will not go to your meeting even though you don't want to go to church in your house you will not do night vigil you will not pray in your house every time you are sleeping you are getting weak get up and sleep pray you are getting weak you are sleeping Yet, you are equating yourself with that money ritual. Look at the time. Money, every money ritual obey the witch doctor. They obey the last word of the rich witch doctor. They obey the last word of the grandmaster. They don't insult them because they are afraid of them. They fear them. But we, we don't obey the voice of our prophet. When the prophet asks you to bring something, he says, now one of them, a thief. You abuse him. When the prophet tells you something, you abuse him to the last. 
When a prophet tell you to bring someone, you bring after prayer and you have not seen what he told you, you abuse him. But they, these people, they don't abuse their grandmaster. They don't abuse their witch doctor. They still have faith that it will still work again. Do you know that those evil men and women that perform charms in the village, do you know how many times they have spent money to do the charm? So, so many charms they do. We keep praying. When you pray, you spoil this charm. Tomorrow they will go and do again. You pray and spoil the charm. Tomorrow they will go and do again. The same witch doctor they are going. The same place they are paying the sacrifice the same person giving them the charm they don't get tired but we christians we get tired a little thing we are tired a little thing we don't want to give again we say the one i give yesterday what did they give me in return you don't need anything from them in return unless you are giving to them you are giving to them in the name of god not in their name nothing consigned them with you you don't give anybody. You say, Pastor, I have done good to, thing to people and they pay me bad. Hello, do I they pay you bad because you are doing because you are doing it for them? One of the pastors I used to give something, hallelujah. One of the pastors I used to give something, both clothes and money, he never comes to my house and go empty. He never begged me anything I never give to him. If I don't give him the whole 10,000, I must have five for four to give to him. Now he went and tell somebody, he says, since Apostle Charles married his wife, he never give, if he's bringing money, his body is paining him. He does not want to go to that place again. He doesn't like the way I behave. Hello, my money, my house. But that does not stop me. I still pick my call and call him. And I have something I preserve I want to give to him. I will call him this week. Or I already called him yesterday to follow me, to come to me today. Because I want him to follow me to orphanage him. And I want to give him something again. It doesn't stop me. Because what I'm giving to him is not him. I'm giving him in the name of Jesus. And I'm giving to him because he's a human being that is present. So I believe whenever I need something from God, I look for human being that is present and give. Anybody who can collect something I have, anybody who can value any item I have, if you can value it, I am happy. When I give you something, you value it, I am happy that Jesus has valued whatever I give to him. It might not necessarily be big. It might not necessarily be a new one. Deliverance by sacrifice. I want to stop here. What have you sacrificed for Christ? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So after giving, you need to believe that whosoever believes. So after giving, you need to believe that you are giving to Christ. You don't give me anything now. Pastor, I've given you money. Here is the money. It doesn't concern you again. Pastor, I bought a land for the ministry. How did you run the ministry? It doesn't concern you. If you are asking me how the giving you gave to me, that means you gave it to me, not God. But you give it in the name of Jesus. Look at what is written in the book of Matthew 25. When you give in the name of Jesus, Jesus, you call his name, comes. Hallelujah. Jesus, you call his name, comes. When we were very small, we have what we call credit book. My aunt used to open a credit book because there's no money. So we buy so many things on credit. So sometimes I used to break a glove of our, our lantern. So when I break the glove, I would just go there at the back and collect more. I would tell the lady, put it. My auntie said, put it on our credit book. It was my auntie's credit book, not my credit. I said, put it in my auntie's credit book. And they would put it on the credit book. Hallelujah. So every time, every time, the money keeps increasing. And I don't know what I was doing. I was just busy. No, I was the one collecting the item, but somebody's name. So the, the owner of the business was not taxing me. She was taxing my auntie because I was buying it in my auntie's name. Good morning, informer. God bless you. And my aunt, so the owner of the thing, item, keep asking me, asking my auntie, where is the money for the glue? My auntie said, I didn't collect any glue. He said, but your name is written on the credit book. So if I am giving this to somebody, I will give it to the person in the name of Jesus. And that is why the owner of the name answer query, not the person I give it to. So when I don't receive that, and I go to the owner of the name. Matthew 25, he said, whenever you do it to anyone, you have done it for me. Hallelujah. Whatever you give to God. 
May God bless you all in the name of Jesus. As you practice what you have learned today, may God bless you wherever you are watching from. This is morning glory. This evening I'm coming back again, 6 p.m. Hallelujah. My baby girl is here. Uh, come, Chimamanda. Come and say hello. Uh, this is Apostle Chimamanda. Hey, my baby girl is here. Uh, all right, who do this girl look look like? Me or her mom? Just check well. Hallelujah. See her. She will say something now. Hallelujah. So, God bless you so much. I'm coming back this evening, 6 p.m. Nigerian time, for marriage without tears. You now know there is marriage without tears. It's possible. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying my own. I don't share tears. And I believe you will not share tears in your marriage. My prayer for you today is that God will open your eyes to see what he wants you to see. God will open your eyes to know when you're supposed to give, where you're supposed to give. In the name of Jesus Christ. And child of God, you don't give to evil men. Man, you don't give to evil woman you don't give to evil altar you will give to a good altar in the name of jesus christ the altar of god you give will bless you in the name of jesus christ god bless you so much wherever you are let the blessings of god mix rich in your life and add no sorrow in the name of jesus christ let the blessings of god come mightily upon you in the name of jesus christ as many of you that are looking for a baby as my daughter is standing here receive your baby in the name of jesus she is smiling receive your baby in the name of jesus receive your baby in the name of jesus i am carrying my own baby you will carry your baby very soon in the name of Jesus Christ. I give you 11 months from now. A lot of you are pregnant already. I give you 8 months from now. You will carry your I give you 7 months from now. You will carry your baby. You will carry your baby exactly 9 months and you shall deliver. Carry your baby the way I am carrying my baby. Happily in the name of Jesus Christ. A lot of you who are expecting your miracle, you shall carry your miracle like this in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall be evidence of what you do. Evidence of your prayer. Result of your prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all of you who have been a support for me to go to orphanage home today. God will support you. God will support the works of your hands. God will support your business in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. Let the hand of God rest mightily upon you as you practice this giving and this sacrifice. Heaven will open for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Heaven will open for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll be going to orphanage home today. All of you have been standing by me, supporting me, following me. Let the blessings of God rest mightily upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Any business you do from now, you shall prosper. Your business shall prosper. Your going out and coming in will prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Every plan and plot of the devil in your life is canceled. In the name of Jesus Christ, I destroy the works of the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. May God open door for you as you give you will call me immediately to share a testimony that you gave look at the answer in the name of jesus christ most of you that we give you shall receive your answer speedily in the name of jesus christ you shall receive your answer speedily in the name of jesus christ let there be answer let there be answer in that business you shall flourish in that business you shall prosper in the name of jesus christ hallelujah God bless you so much. This is morning glory. And the name of my daughter is Chima Manda, meaning my God will not fail me. Hallelujah. My name still remains your regular host, Charles Freeman Okafor. You can watch me on YouTube. Go and click on my YouTube. Charles, search on Charles, Charles Freeman Okafor. For watch the YouTube, subscribe and you share it. Hallelujah. Like and you share it. May God bless you all for watching in the name of Jesus. Keep gathering your question this night. We are going to suck on, we're going to study on marriage without tears. Hallelujah. Keep ask, picking your question and keep preparing for joining to that meeting. 6 p.m. Nigerian time. Hallelujah. I will not stop from saying this. 
wherever you are watching from, we need your support. Hallelujah. We need a land for the worship of God. We need a land for the ministry. Hallelujah. We have gotten a hall. If you can pay for a hall, however you know you can support this ministry moving, I have the word. Hallelujah. I've been running away from all this while, but this time I am out to do the work. Hallelujah. For 11 years preaching, today I want to have an altar. I want to raise an altar for Christ as God is telling me to raise the altar. So please, I am praying that God will use you to stand by me to raise that altar in the name of Jesus. If you want to call me, my number is written there and I'm going to write it out. Wherever you are, you can call this number. This is my number. Oh, you can call this number wherever you are. If you want to call me for prayer, not only for prayer, you call me, you want to be a blessing to me, or you want to support us in this work, or you want to give us a land. God is telling me there is somebody here. I keep on saying it all the time because I heard from God. He told me there is somebody who will watch this video, who will give us a land, who will pay for the place we will use for the ministry. And that person will be you. As many of you who want to be a blessing to us for this ministry, may God bless your business. May God bless the works of your hand. We have gotten a hall. We need a little money to fill it. We need some instrument, our speaker, so many things. Power arm is not enough for the work of the ministry. We need it more and more. If God has blessed you, bless us also. Our number is written on the screen. You can call me. Go and watch my video on YouTube at Charles Freeman Okafo. Click on that name and you watch it. Subscribe. Hallelujah. Let's keep this ministry moving. Jesus is working. Charles Okafo is testifying. Jesus is working. Charles Okafo is testifying. Jesus is working. All of us are testifying. Remember, your testimony keeps me moving open your whatsapp again open the youtube and you can watch other videos may god bless you in jesus name i love you i am waiting for your call i am waiting for you to impose me in jesus name and chimamanda is saying hello 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 you want to say something hello i i i i i hello hey hey that is girl God bless you so much. Say hi to Mr. Ima James. Tell Ima James, say hi to his son, Chizi Tere. Hallelujah. Say hi to Sister Jennifer Nche Dochuku, that her children that are in her womb, you will come to carry her children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will come for her children education, not child education, children education. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. A lot of sisters that are not married, tell them, Oh, tell them that you are coming to do cheap, bright, uh, little, little bright. Uh, I don't know how they do it. Hallelujah. You are coming to, I don't know how they say it. God bless you so much. Uh -huh. Say, Ike Namane. Ike, we are coming. Hallelujah. To celebrate with him, Rebecca, that you are coming to celebrate with her. Hallelujah. Celebration is coming. And in in inform blessings of God, I'm coming to celebrate with you. Hello. Hello, you are coming to celebrate along with you. God bless you so much. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day, all of you. Chiki, 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 chiki. Have a blessed day. Somebody's calling you and you are looking up. Look here. Say, all right, have a good day until we see later in the evening. I love you.